Oh, Phil, stand over the door, your nigga. I said, no, go test over the door, Charlie Keep Gunt. My name is Stan Payton, and I'm a stickball maker. Well, I was born out large. I was born in New Mexico. So knowing Cherokee was not something that I had. I mean, I had my dad. He showed me a little bit of stuff in Cherokee, but it wasn't a whole lot. And when I, we moved back to Stillwell, Oklahoma in my seventh grade year, I went ahead and grew up here and I had no idea about stickball or anything. And I made friends with a person that made stickball sticks. And it was really interesting to me. So I started helping them. And as I helped them, I kind of grew on building stickball sticks. And then I got an order for myself, like a couple pairs or something, and I made them. And then it just went on from there. And now I make all kinds of sticks. <laughs> I started making sticks in 2011, and yes, it was traditional ways of making stickball sticks, as we know of now. It took me a while because the art of stickball making is an art, and there's so much to it that it's hard to learn. The traditional way, you get a vise, you get a, a draw knife, you draw a knife, to, you carve it out. The way that, that I learned it, and the old way, I guess is what you'd call it, is with a draw knife, and this is the way. That was taught. And then the other way, through trial and error, I would get an order of 10, 20 pairs, and that's, you know, it'd take me a week to make 20 pairs of sticks by myself on that. And so one day I got an order called in for 197 pair and I had to figure out how to build them faster. And so, so that's where I started evolving on making them a different way. This took me four years to start building them this way, to learn how to build them this way. And through trial and error, I get orders a lot, orders for like 50, 60 pair, you know, 20 pair orders a lot. And one of the reasons why I want to mass produce it is because there's few stickball makers and the game is part of us and it's something that we're missing out on. And if I can get more sticks out to people, more sticks in their hands, then it'd be more people that won't grow up like me, that don't know that part about them. As of right now, we cut the log in quarters. We cut it in half and then we cut it in a quarter. And then I've got a little makeshift sawmill that I, that I cut slabs out with. And then from the inside of the, the quarter of the slab, we cut one inch pieces and then we plane them down to what size it needs to be. And then we cut the cup out. This is my son Stan, Stan Wadey. Let him cut the cup out. He does it better than anybody else does. So we get it out, we'll sand it to that line. It takes a little process to sand it. I want to send the line and we'll take it to this steamer over here. Now this steamer actually gets hotter than boiling water. They said it's 350 degrees. It's really hot. So I get it hot, I leave them in here. I put 36 stabs in the steamer. And so that's the tag of the cup. And after it's bent, we hang them up for three or four days, let them set, let them dry, let them get that bend in them where it's not wanting to come back out. Then we sand them down and drill holes in them and string them and send them out. I know that the wooden sticks are pricey and some people I know can afford it. And so I started making the plastic sticks where it'd be a fourth of the price 
I was hoping schools and stuff would buy them too. It would help out on the budget and also get more sticks out for more people to play. And that's the reason why I'm putting plastic sticks. And I made 800 pair of these on the order this year. I don't know, probably made a thousand this year of these. There's several different ways of weaving a cup. Uh, we got Cherokee, we got the Choctaw weave, we got the Seminole and the Muscogee is about the same. Uh, so the way I do it is the Cherokee way and what I learned, and I'm sure there's other ways of Cherokee ways, but the one I learned, that's the reason why I did it that way. So this is Cherokee style, Western Cherokee style. Now the Eastern Cherokees, do a whole different way of stickball. This is my other son, Zachary. And this is what I call my prayer braid. I pray for whoever's playing with these. But whenever I braid these sticks, I put a prayer in that braid and then I tie it up. Just so in case if someone's going through a hard time in life or Keep them safe playing stickball sticks or just just a prayer for the person and then lock it in that braid. It's just something I do no one else has done it, I guess. I don't know. Me being out large, I didn't really know didn't really grow up with a whole lot of people around, so I didn't really know a lot of people. So building stickball sticks has got me connected with more of the people in the community. And it's also brought something in me that's connected me to myself. My children uh, helps me build stickball sticks. I've taught them how to make the sticks. Both of my boys know from the start to the finish on how to make sticks, traditional way and the way I do it now. It makes me feel good because it's something that I didn't have and I didn't get a chance to experience growing up. I got to give them something that I didn't have. And it's always good to do that with your kids. It makes me feel like that I've accomplished, beginning to accomplish what I set out to do. And that's to put more sticks and more kids' hands and they get to have a little bit of who they are.